How's that? Yeah. Hello. Hi, guys. We're here. Sorry it took a little longer today. I had a meeting that ran over. Hashtag administrator problems. Um, but I'm Jenny. I'm Betsy. And we are the tall and the short of it. Um, and we're continuing our month on social skills. Yay. Yes. Um, and today, last time we did the why. The why. Right? Mm -hmm. For why we teach social skills. This mm -hmm. time we're doing the how. So if you missed the why, just go down in the... Yeah, um, scroll down. Scroll down and you'll find it yes, on our, our Facebook page. Yes, absolutely. And um, this week is the how. So evidence-based practices when teaching social skills is what we'll be talking about today. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to have some fun with that. So if you pop in... Um, make sure that you comment and say hello to us so we know who you are. And also, if you watch this on the replay, give us a hashtag replay so we can see who is, is joining in and, and our conversations. And we'll keep mm -hmm. checking back for comments and questions and things like that as well. And don't forget, participate, participate. Even if you aren't watching live, we're totally okay with you adding in questions and comments yeah. later. We're constantly checking back in and... Yep, uh, we're watching. We're watching yes. for the participation so that we can see what you like and what you don't like, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so evidence-based practices. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> we hear that word thrown around a lot in education, don't we? And we all think we know what that means, or we do this, like we know what that means, right? But basically, it's what works. <laughs> okay, so if we want to if we want to talk about what an evidence-based practice is, it means we must have evidence that this practice actually works mm -hmm. in order for us to continue using it. Because if we're doing something that's not working, that's pretty like what definition of insanity, right? <laughs> so and <laughs> don't get me wrong, that happens sometimes in education that we don't realize we're continuing to do the same thing and not changing up. Our, our own behavior as adults in order yes. to help make behaviors change, yes. right? That's the only way to change behavior. <laughs> exactly. So with social skills, we want to um, use practices that actually work in order to help our kiddos. And I was reading this, and I actually shared this with Betsy the other day when we were on the phone. Um, I was reading some research on social skills, and they actually said that, hey, Brittany, um, they actually said that social skills instruction is the most effective between the ages of 4 and 12. Mm -hmm. um, that prior to age 4, um, kids are, are really sucking in a lot of information anyway. Hey, um, are sucking in, sucking in a lot of information anyway, more for, for language and for um, learning to walk and learning well, to, say you those know, gross motor, all the fine motor gross skills, and fine yeah. motor skills and all of that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. they really haven't picked up on the social skills yet. <laughs> um, they're not cognitively ready for that. Um, they learn the high and by. Yeah. <laughs> they may inappropriately hug strangers. <laughs> you know, there's those kinds of things that little ones do. Um, but by the time they reach about the age of four, they start to become aware um, of social appropriateness. And we have to teach that as parents and as, as teachers. So, um, so we're going to talk about three big, now how many did we say when, when I was looking at that research? Was there 27? 27. There's actually yeah. 27 evidence-based practices for teaching social According skills. to Ash. According to ASHA, the SLP website, um, and and a lot of times um, speech language pathologists will be the ones who, who help with social skills curriculums. Um, they work with a lot of the communication, and social mm -hmm. skills is a lot of communication. So um, we are so we're going to only talk about the big three, and these are the three that we feel will give you the most bang for your buck right away. Right. Plus, we kind of want to go home at some point this evening. Exactly. We can't do 27 <laughs> in one life. That would be ridiculous. But so. there, And it is important to note, because we're talking about the, the, the three main ones, that still doesn't mean these will work for, right. I mean, that's why there's 27. You, right. It's trial and error. Right. Um, and if these three don't work for you, Google. <laughs> that's what Put we did. 27 <laughs> evidence-based practices. And that article will pop right up for mm -hmm. you, and you'll be able to look at some of the mm -hmm. other ones. And I was actually kind of surprised when I was looking at some of them. Didn't you say one of them was um, 
I know we only said we're going to talk about three, but the one that we both thought was interesting was exercise. Exercise is an evidence-based practice for social skills um, that kids who exercise more and really work those bodies, then they're able to have better social skills. Maybe um, that's maybe yeah. we, maybe that's our problem. <laughs> Maybe we don't exercise to, enough. We're not working. Yeah, exercising uh, enough. That's all right. Yes. Okay. So the big three, and Betsy's going to talk about the first one, so I'm going to let her take it away. All right. Well, the first one is social skills. Sorry. Social stories. That's <laughs> okay. Social <laughs> stories. And um, I have some different ones to show you because there are so many different ways to do social stories, mainly because, one, we're talking about kids from, you know, say we're looking at um, – the ed their educational career we're looking at kids possibly from preschool all the way um, to 22 um, in the um, educational setting but it could be used for you know anyone and um, actually if you really once you look at these you'll notice that people a lot of social stories are used in a sense um, hey Mandy in our lives like if we're in public like in a restroom or um, Different yes. things like that. They, you know, they have yes. words and then um, the little directions direction, in the bathroom yes. for all employees to wash their hands. Yes, hand. yes. <laughs> I mean, yes, but those are little social stories. So, okay. But the main one, and I guess what we would maybe think of you a too, traditional, Mandy. hang on, I like this one, um, is a book. Right. And guys, I mean, when I say a book, it's not like, oh, where do you find these? Where can I buy it? It's, chances are you're going to be writing it. Um and um, these, actually, these two books I wrote, um, you know, because I'm just waiting on my publisher to call. <laughs> but it's just my hands book. This is a book about hands are not for hitting. And I go through and talk about that. And they're very basic. This is nothing, um, this is nothing huge that you're like, oh my gosh, what do I write? Like, literally, my hands book. I have two hands. Hands are not for hitting, and I have a, a, a visual here. Do you know where I get a lot of my visuals? Because um, these are just for me to use in my classroom. I go to Google and go to images, and then when I type in something, I might type in no hitting, and then I put clip art. Um, so um, that's where I get a lot of my images mm -hmm. that are for free. Now, if I were to want to use this for other purposes outside of my classroom, you have to start yeah. thinking about like copyright copyright and, like and all that. of that yeah. but and you can get programs like board maker mm -hmm. or software different software mm -hmm. that there's were... well and there's even um different um websites that myself and our slp mm -hmm. here and i we um will use um one of them is i've been using is called smarty <laughs> she's looking i am smarty <laughs> symbols Smarty, Smarty symbol. symbols and then um, lesson picks is another one. Mm -hmm. Lesson picks is like thirty something a year, so that's definitely mm -hmm. not. I mean, yes, you have to pay for it, but that's definitely Smarty symbols can get much more expensive. Um, so, anyways, like I said, there's different ways, but if you're wanting to do it free, um, but then I put some things in here that hands. I, I don't know. Yeah, hold hands up, are for clapping. Sorry, it's backwards. I didn't flip it. Oh, yeah, she doesn't. We'll blame Jenny on that one. Sorry. So anyways, I went through hands are for helping, hands are for working, hands are for waving, hands are for playing, and then at the end, like I it's backwards, I say it again, hands are not for hitting. And then I had one um, for feet. Feet are mm -hmm. not for kicking. Mm -hmm. um, here's something else to, to think about is especially um, a few years ago, we had a student who was doing um, physically, um, it was to the teachers, it was to us personally, and um, was wanting to hit us. Or so. Mm -hmm. so we used our pictures in that um, social story because we catered, or you know, we made it just for this mm -hmm. child. And that is something like, these are nice that I can use it mm -hmm. for all my kids, but at the same time, I usually really like to have it, I'm sorry, I'm kicking the table. Um, I really like to have it um, individualized. Sure, sure. So, And the reason that we keep the language in these very simple is because a lot of times kiddos, even all the way up through middle school and high school, if they have any cognitive deficits or if they have autism, 
they need very simple language to understand social skills even if they may read higher than that or they may mm -hmm. you know they need very simple language for that because um, they can't take in um, large quantities of um, text in a social story and mm -hmm. still understand it at the same time because they need more time to process and they would need more time you know if it's just for very short simple sentences mm -hmm. keeping it very simple that's usually the best way to get the point across and then we can practice that afterwards well, and we'll talk about the delivery method sure. um, more in a sense next week but also you're wanting to read these stories in the middle of the day as like if mm -hmm. if one of my students hits another student I'm gonna read the social story right then mm -hmm. I don't have time to sit down and spend 10 minutes um, reading a, a story every time that happens because it mm -hmm. could be happening right. a lot so you keep it it's nice to keep it short and sweet too because also if you keep it simple like that the kids start to memorize it and mm -hmm. they you know then it they be and then able you to don't need it. to have the book anymore you can just say you can put your hands on their hands and say hands and they say hands are not for hitting you know yeah. so that we can mm -hmm. you know have that mantra going yes. on in their head <laughs> at that time as well yeah. so well and again these will not be but here's just one I know you can't read it necessarily um, but it you remember the highlights um, and the Rebus stories and the highlights books remember mm -hmm. that's what made, sorry made me think of this but this is for an older student it's one page it's not a book it makes it nice that you can just either hang it on a wall this is a, um, a bathroom situation um, what they need to do about I, I have two bathroom situations apparently the bathroom requires a lot of social stories <laughs> it does um, sometimes but um, but anyways and I mean guys look we have a picture I mean you can find these pictures I think this was made with board maker um, but I mean you do have pictures like mm -hmm. this um, you, the next one I'm getting ready to show you was not made with board, make, board maker. So I'm just, like I said, simple. And then, yay. Welcome to our reality. <laughs> when you poop. <laughs> and and by the way, I pulled these off my computer. Like, we did not make these, right. create, we these didn't create these for this. Did. These are these things are, we've used with actual yeah. children. <laughs> So when you poop and this was actually hung in um, a stall and so um, but yeah I found this um, I think this was this I believe was done using Google images and then clip art mm -hmm. if you put the clip art you're gonna be much safer googling things like wiping your mm -hmm. rear <laughs> um, than what you you know if you put that clip art there you're probably gonna be much much safer Sure. But um, kind of just lets them know, and um, I wasn't even, I went over um, this once with the student, and then it was able to, um, hey, Patty, you popped in right on time, Patty, at the <laughs> perfect moment, Patty, to see this. Um, I went over it once with the student. The student was um, capable of reading and all that, and they, this worked. They right. followed, they followed the... So anyways, yes. social stories can look very different. Um, something else you could do is have um, maybe a little cards with social stories on them on your lanyard um, to carry around mm -hmm. with you. Use and like, they can just be short one sentence cards if you need them to be too. Um, the one I posted today, this morning, has, is a little more wordy, but this one was a social story to help explain to one student with a disability about how their friend has autism um, so that they could understand why their friend behaves that the way that they do or why they have trouble with certain things. So that one was created and I would not give them that entire social story at one time. It was broken into strips and that one um, would be one where we would do the first strip and we would talk about it and then maybe the next day maybe we might do the second strip. Mm -hmm. But then we would keep those as a reminder um, for that student that they could you know if they got frustrated with their friend okay let's go over to our, our social story about my friend has autism and I want you to find the part where your friend might be struggling and then we teach that empathy mm -hmm. okay so all right so like yeah there we could do a whole one of these yes. social stories we could quite continue. honestly and there's social um, stories for everything out there mm -hmm. one resource that 
all teachers need to know about is every district in the state of Indiana, and I don't know in other states, so you'd wanna check with your state if you're from outside of Indiana, but in Indiana, each district has an autism lead leader, okay? And some, it's been somebody that's been assigned by, the, by the, the special ed director, superintendent, something like that, to be on a listserv with the Indiana Center Resource Center for Autism. And they have um, an entire like Google folder that they have shared with your autism leader that's full of social stories that are already created and made, just like the one I posted today. Um, that one was actually made by that particular group. Um, and but it's got a big Google folder full of pre-made social stories for lots of situations, holidays, funerals, divorce, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff that we can help to talk about and things with kids. Here's something else, like you guys know your kids, you know what they need. Maybe instead of looking at that and maybe saying, okay, this isn't going to work for my student, use it as um, an example and kind of, mm -hmm. okay, this is how they worded it. I don't, you know, I need to switch some things around or I need different pictures. Do that, but use that as, that's what, I mean, I write all of my own social stories, but I have quite a few books that have social stories in them. And mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I just use it as uh, an example and work yeah, ideas. There. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because you yeah. definitely want it to fit the situation that the yes. child is in, mm -hmm. for sure. All right, we're ready to go to the yes, next thing? Yes, let's go to the next one. All right, so now we're going to talk about the next one, which is modeling. Okay, now I know last week we talked about how kids don't kids with disabilities don't typically pick up social skills very well just from watching. So why would we be saying modeling is an evidence-based practice? Well, it's how you go about modeling that's evidence-based. So the first thing you would want to do is what we call um, scripting and rehearsal. Okay, so we would script out whatever we were wanting to practice with the student um, into like a, a tiny play, <laughs> basically. Uh -huh. um, this person's gonna say this, then this person, like well, if we were doing one on how to, how to greet a, a new person, you know, let's, mm -hmm. let's greeting a peer. Um, so we would script out, this person says to the other person this, and then this person mm -hmm. says this back. And then we would rehearse that. So as far as modeling goes, we would have two people who understand it model that script for the student. Then we would have the student participate and rehearse it. Mm -hmm. And then we could use something called video modeling. So we tell them now we're gonna take a video and that way we can watch it when we forget and we need a reminder. Well, and what's really great for us is in our district, our students are one-to-one -one, um, with iPads. And so that way you can do it on their own iPad mm -hmm. um, or whatever device. And that way you can always like I mean, parents, do it on your phone. That way it's always with you. When you're mm -hmm. out in public, you can stop and be like, let's watch, we need a reminder. So right. that's one great thing about the and there, video. And let me just say this, again, our own opinions, not the opinions of anyone else, right? My opinion is this, there are pre-made video models out there where it shows another person modeling the appropriate behavior that you want the student to display. I don't feel that those are as effective as if you write the script yourself for the specific situations that they're having trouble with and you have them practice and rehearse that and you have them make a video of either them and a peer or two peers that are in his class or someone else that they know someone that's in their real life well and especially if they're um, a part of it or are able to be a part of it like they just love watching themselves yes oh students. my gosh it makes the, so them so motivated to make the video right well just today one of my students sat and watched himself reading a story on video for mm -hmm. like numerous times um and trick number one <laughs> for teaching for kids who don't want to read to you tell them you, you'll take a video mm -hmm. of them reading and they can watch it i don't need it yeah he <laughs> watched himself reading over and over and um so I think like that just they want to watch themselves mm -hmm. so that's a vi they're very um, motivated by mm -hmm. technology so getting them to create a video of them performing mm -hmm. and practicing a social skill is going to to, mm -hmm. to be helpful okay let me ask I have a question no uh, fine. <laughs> you're fine hi Missy <laughs> so okay so I not all students are going to want to be recorded right um so I keep catching this with my, my the table with my foot I'm sorry um 
What about, sorry, I'm thinking about, because right behind this are puppets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can, what are your thoughts on that? Like Using doing it, puppets you, for the video modeling? Mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate as long as the child is a part of it and has right. ownership of it. Well, I can um, see, I, a lot of my, I can see some of my kids would speak through a puppet. Sure. Um, to be recorded, but wouldn't fact, necessarily that's a, speak. that's a huge therapy technique. I mean, mm -hmm. the, I don't know if you've seen some of the, I think there's even been TV shows where the parent gets out the puppet and the kid has the puppet mm -hmm. and they talk things out with the puppets yeah. instead of themselves. Um, so yeah, I would say puppets would be a great way to do that if they were not wanting their faces to be on camera. When I can just, it, it would probably be more not willing to speak mm -hmm. um, on camera, but I just feel like um, that might be something neat. For yeah, us. I have tons of puppets back here. So awesome accommodation um, for that. And for so sure. that might be something. And we it's it's try also out. appropriate. Let's say we can't even get the kid. The kid doesn't want to be in the video, and they don't want to use a the puppet. They don't want. They don't want to do it. But as long as they're there, okay. Why don't you be my helper and you be the cameraman? And mm -hmm. we have two other kids model it. So at least they're part of the process. They're mm -hmm. having that ownership. Um, because vis video modeling is incredibly, um, it, it is evidence-based. It works mm -hmm. for kids. But it also, there's also research behind them having peers in the video versus adults. If you show them adults doing the behavior, they're not going to get mm -hmm. it as well as if it's a peer. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's a, it's a great activity to g engage your class in. Um, and something that I feel like is awesome for the beginning of the school year when you're starting rules for the classroom, mm -hmm. if you can get the kids to make videos of themselves following the rules and then mm -hmm. review those throughout those first months of school, um, that's gonna solve so many of your issues right from the get-go, plus they have fun doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. I just think modeling is a great way, but like I said, you have to incorporate um, hey Ryan, <laughs> you have to incorporate all those pieces where the kid actually has some ownership yeah. in creating that video um, for for it to be the most successful. That, in my opinion, in my no. experience, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like I said, I can show the kid a video. I can pull a YouTube video up on some social skill, but they might watch it and they may even talk about it with me. But that doesn't mean it's going to translate into yeah. anything in your classroom. Yeah. Well, and if they see themselves doing it on video, then. Mm -hmm. They know they can do it. Exactly. <laughs> and then they're not practicing it. You can say, busted. I know yeah. you know how to do that. Yeah. So, so for right. sure. All right. That's number two. So we've talked about social stories. We've talked about modeling. Our big three, the, the third one of our big three is visual supports. Ooh. Did I do that? Okay. <laughs> it's my turn. Again, <laughs> it's backwards. Uh, so. I should have really turned this around. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, visual. Can I still do it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try. I hope I don't lose everybody. We'll see. All right. Visual supports. Um, oh, look at that. Yay. I don't know how to get it to go away now. Well, you don't, we don't need maybe it to. Maybe I don't need it to. Oh, maybe it's this. <laughs> Sorry. I'm putting my finger on everything. There we go. All right. We are, hey, you can read now. Yay. We're so professional. Now it's weird, though, because we're opposite. Uh, I know. Okay, visual cues. Are you going to do your visual cue? I will. Oh, were you going to do it in the middle of me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's going <laughs> to get me. Okay, these are on little popsicle sticks. Um, this one says my turn, your turn. And they're great for our kids. We use them a lot. I actually, um, if you know me at all, I would lose this in two seconds. <laughs> Let's not pan over here and look at my desk. Um, I would have this on my lanyard. I'd have a little um, pull punch and put a ring and have it on my lanyard um, during the day. But this would be great for us. Like I do a lot of like mm -hmm. small group activities um, to teaching the kids, not necessarily me using it, the kids using it. Um, maybe turning it, you know, okay, I took my turn. Let me turn it over. I know when it's mm -hmm. green, it's my turn to go. When it's red, it's your turn to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there's a... This is my weight one. <laughs> um, I just was interjecting that I would probably actually laminate these two. Oh, yeah. For sure, because our kids, like, you laminate everything. And <laughs> my laminator actually sits on my desk and it's plugged in at all times. Right. So, um, so yeah, so this one is wait or stop. Stop. Um, this one's great for impulsive kids. 
So let's say you're doing small group and you've got kids, and I'd use this in middle school. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Um, you've got kids who you're doing an activity with and you're asking them questions, but you've got that kid that constantly blurts out and won't wait until you actually finish the sentence before they start answering and then they're usually wrong because they didn't listen all the way and then you know, and then there creates that whole drama and we don't get anything done, right? So what I would do is I would say, okay, as long as the stop sign is up, well, hey, Kristen. By the way, I, Kristen gave me these graphics oh. so I can make these, yes. So Kristen Hodge, who's watching right now with us, um, actually helped me make these. So we're talking about visual cues. Jump in at any time with, with, <laughs> with your comments. Um, but I would use this, if I was in a small group, I would hold this up and I'd say, okay, now, as long as the stop sign is up, you don't talk, okay? So we're not gonna answer till the stop sign comes down, okay? And so then I would ask the question and I would say, wait, wait, when the stop sign goes down, okay, get the answer ready in your head, get the answer ready in your head. And that gives, allows time for kids with slower processing, all that good stuff. And then I would say, okay, and you have your mouth ready to say the answer. And I would point at the child I'm looking at and I would say, okay, you can answer. That makes it so they're not gonna blurt out, so they're not, and then, okay, next person, here's your question, wait, wait. Got your answer ready in your head. Okay, we're ready to go and go ahead and answer. And I said, I would use this with middle school kids if they were still blurting and still doing all of those kinds of things. But just a simple vid visual cue like that can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And it allows everybody wait time and time to think um, when you're doing well, groups and things like that. And they are so simple to, like I said, have with you, keep with you. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, like I put mine um, on my lanyard. I A lot of times we'll just um, use a little ring are they have special the little names? key ring rings you know what I'm talking about I don't they yeah. have special names I, I don't know oh, there no. um, <laughs> I probably have some sitting on my desk or actually they're not because they're out in my classroom um, and that way you just always have them on you or the ones mm -hmm. that you use most often like right. like the stop or the wait or um, I will have one I last year I had one I think that said listen mm -hmm. um, and so um, and a visual cue doesn't have to be paper either. It can be a nonverbal. So you can mm -hmm. teach the kids, when I grab my ears, that means it's time to listen. Or when I grab my ear, it's time to listen. Mm -hmm. You can teach the kids, when I raise my hand, that's when we get quiet. Have you seen their elementary teachers do that? Yeah. I raise my hand, get quiet. Um, well, and like my morning, in the morning we sing a rule song and the video actually has uh, book rings. Thanks, Kristen. Woo! <laughs> book rings. Um, they um, have, there's motions to the song. So now we have been able to move away from, I mean, we still sing the song because it's fun. Um, but I just, I have to cue them. What does, you know, what are our rules? And this one's listen to our teacher. This one's, um, no, this one's follow directions. <laughs> this one's listen. <laughs> Guys, it's, um, but I love it when I do that and they correct me. That shows yeah, there me you they go. know. Um, you know, listen to my teacher. I'm always, um, I keep my hands to myself. I'm nice to everybody. So, mm -hmm. um, those are great. Anytime you compare movement, mm -hmm. um, as a visual cue with any type of learning. Um, mm -hmm. if I had more room here, I would show them my, my whole little dance I made up for my middle school kids on learning the seven continents, but <laughs> we um, will not do that right now. <laughs> I'm just saying, I have a whole rug over here, and I can move the camera. No, no, not right now. But I tell you, my kids knew the seven continents after that, and they weren't saying that Africa was a country anymore. Um, but um, Movement yeah. is huge. And so, mm -hmm. like, those visual cues, I think, that we can put with um, movement. And even um, a lot of times I notice some of our uh, classes, like, we'll talk about the bubble when they're in the hallway. They mm -hmm. do the visual cue of, like, Mm -hmm. You know, like that. But I have one of my students that he does this when we walk in the hallway because he um, needs, he gives himself that visual, that mm -hmm. visual reminder. For sure. Um, um, there's visual cues for noise level. There's visual cues for um, line up. There's, you, you can use visual cues for anything. But what we want to avoid, and um, this one I actually learned from an English language learner specialist which I was like, kind of like, it made a light bulb pop on for me. Um, Cause a lot of times our kids who have language impairments and who are on the autism spectrum um, or have ADHD, 
they really need your visual cues just the same way a student who's learning English for the first time mm -hmm. needs those. So more kids than just our special ed kids are gonna benefit from those visual cues. Mm -hmm. But here's the example she gave. She said, she, she spoke in a completely different language to us. I believe it was Russian or something. So no one in the room knew what she was saying. And she was giving verbal directions with no visual cues. And all of us are just looking at her like, we have no idea what you're saying. And then she said, oh, okay, well, let me try that again. So she said the exact same thing in the other language, but she held up a piece of paper. She folded it in half. She pointed on the table at the pieces of paper we had. She held it up, she folded it in half. So she was modeling and giving us visual cues. About, so every single person in the room, 100% of us, followed her directions, even though we didn't understand a single word coming out of her mouth, but we could do it from the visual cues. And I was like, oh my gosh. And there was just this light bulb, like, yes, that's what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing she said was a lot of times we will start to give verbal directions and we will turn away from the children and go pick something up off our desk while we're giving it. Or we'll go put hand cream on. Or we'll do something else that's not a visual cue for what we're asking them to do. And then we get upset when they didn't do it. <laughs> but we didn't give them those visual cues they might need to be successful well, or as if, we were giving verbal I mean, directions. It goes back to the social skills. Typically when we're talking to someone, we're looking at them. Mm -hmm. So if you turn around, then therefore they may think, you're not talking to me because mm -hmm. you're not looking at me. Yeah, that, that could be the case too. So visual well, cues are probably the biggest, if you start using visual cues in your classroom or even as a parent, when you're telling your kids to do something, you're gonna see an increase in compliance. I mean, you're just, it's, that's what's gonna happen. The more visual cues that you use and teach and make sure that they practice and that they learn, um, they are going to, you're gonna see an increase in compliance. Well, and just like I said, but just back to social skills, like as a whole, in general, we were talking about this last night. And the thing to remember is, before you start putting in, um, like the visual cues and putting in um, the modeling piece and the social stories piece, the most important pe part of that is you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. You are, those I would say need to come before you would automatically go to a visual cue. Because if you're mm -hmm. going to a visual cue, you're going to have to do some teaching. Sure. But more often than not, why a child is not doing what you've asked or doing the expectation that's been put there is it because they're trying to be awful or, you know, they're not trying to be no. disrespectful. They're not, it's, they don't know. And just because they might be of an age that you feel like they should know, um, just because you feel like they may be come from, you, that they, right. well, surely they, their parents have taught them that. Well, and, they're in fifth grade. Yeah. They should know this by now. But yeah, that's what you have to do first. You have to teach them how to do it because we, right. we were saying like when a child comes into kindergarten the very first thing we do is like oh they don't know how to write their names so what do we do we teach them how to write mm -hmm. their name um some kids might know how to mm -hmm. some kids may not know you know some kids may have not had any exposure yeah to that so and we have to always assume we do not know um i, I was at a conference recently where the guy said every child comes to school with two backpacks the physical backpack that they actually carry their stuff in and an invisible backpack that's their story that we don't know anything about yet. Mm -hmm. And all the things inside that backpack, we don't know what they've been exposed to, what kind of trauma they've had, what kind of um, disabilities might be there when they first will come to us, you know, those kinds of things. So we have to search and figure out what's in that invisible backpack um, so that we can help them learn best and and so I think as if we just remember that as we're trying to teach these uh, kids Kids will they want to do right mm -hmm. when they're little um, if they're not doing right It's because they haven't been taught or because they don't understand even after they've been taught Yeah, so um, or like I said, and I think we talked about this at first too is that um, that behavior has worked for them in the past so it was reinforcing. Yes. <laughs> so we need to help them learn mm -hmm. that, you know, that there's, it's better to be successful than to not be successful. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just, yeah, all of these things are tools that we use daily um, in our 
my classroom. I was going mm-hmm. to say our classrooms. But, sure. Um, wherever you are out in the the world. <laughs> That's right. I, um, and they, I mean, like I said, they work. Sometimes, um, as, like I said, that's the, the important thing to remember also is what works for one kid won't necessarily work for another. And so um, I've no, sometimes I'll notice that like a social story becomes negatively reinforcing at times because it's Oops. like, ah, like I, you know, they, they get tired of seeing it. And that's when I might switch to like something like this that is on one sheet that I can mm-hmm. easily, you know, just point and do that with. Um, so it's again it's trial and error but here are some great things to get started with sure all right well i think that's plenty for today oh yeah like yeah. i said we yeah that was only three what did we say there were 27. 27 of these <laughs> evidence-based practices but we don't have time for that in one live mm-hmm. um but as always we and we appreciate and we welcome any of your comments or additions mm-hmm. ideas your social stories you've created post them we'd love to see those um anything that you want to add to the conversation that's why we're here it doesn't have to Mm -hmm. just be me and betsy um Mm -hmm. so please add those resources and if you know of another great free resource we like free resources um post that you can post links here guys you have successes success stories failures (laughs) keep it relevant and keep kids names out of it that's all we ask yeah um (laughs) So, yeah. Because um, honestly, we probably usually learn more, probably usually. Yeah. <laughs> Been a day. Mm-hmm. Um, it, we learn more a lot. We learn, I give up. Best from each other? No, we learn more from the failures usually. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I know where you're going now. Sorry. All right, we learn deal. more from the failures and um, than, That's we, true. than we do the successes. And I have failed a lot as a teacher in 21 years. <laughs> I think I failed a lot today. Oh, yeah. Well, it happens. Trial and error. That's mm-hmm. what this is all yep. about. Isn't that what we were saying in our first video about no secret sauce? Yes. No, we, no. we just keep Trial trying new stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. So we are going to sign off for this week. And next week, we'll be coming back to talk about the service delivery models, mm-hmm. the where. Where we deliver social skills. And we may invite somebody to join us. I don't know who it might be yet. But we may invite somebody to to join us next week if we can. <laughs> okay. I think it I think an SLP might be a good person to have in that conversation. So if you know any of those, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if if if, if the one might be willing to do that. Um and uh, that doesn't mean it has to be one of ours. It can be someone from another district. We'll put you on camera as long as you're on. So if you're interested in being part of service delivery models, you let us know because we'd love to bring on our first guest um, to uh, talk about that next week. Um, because they may not, I mean, we only know what we've done mm-hmm. and other people might do it different. Yep. And I think that's part of the conversation. Right. So, all right, until next week, that's it for us on the tall and the short of it, education conversations with Betsy and Jenny. Bye guys. Bye.